If only we could forecast cheeseburgers to fall from the sky, there would never be a bad joke again about a meteorologist. I think we would get to like hero status. Hi, I'm meteorologist Stephanie Abrams. I've been in storms, chasing storms for a good 15 years. So now we're gonna see how Hollywood does it and watch some clips. What they did was 100% correct. If there's a tornado coming, you get underground, if you can, right? And they went into their cellar. Of course, Dorothy didn't make it into the cellar and you know the whole thing got picked up and spun around. Now, I've never seen an entire home get picked up like that and of course end up in some faraway land. But what tornadoes do is they will just annihilate homes. It's not a matter of picking them up. It's a matter of flattening them and destroying them and leaving nothing. Obviously, there's livestock outside when you're dealing with severe weather, when it comes to tornadoes or thunderstorms, and they do unfortunately do get killed, they do get hurt. Um, in this instance, however, I don't know that you would ever see, you know, an animal gracefully flying through the sky. Of course, it would be a lot more traumatic for the animal than is shown in this movie. So the thing is, is when you have a cold air mass, it could literally cover the entire East Coast. You don't have like a tube of cold air going down, say, the Empire State Building. And let me tell you, if the thing is like cracking out windows, you know, through that building, and you saw it's already encroaching on the building that they were going into, they'd already be gonzo. We've never seen a thunderstorm produce five, six, you know, seven tornadoes all at one time like that. But, you know, I wonder if this is a play on the fact that within a tornado, just one tornado, you actually have little rotating vortices within that tornado. Or sometimes you can have one tornado and then you have just this little satellite thing that kind of goes down, uh, you know, outside the tornado and, and can cause some damage. So I wonder if it was a play on that. What I think one of the reasons that tornadoes are so scary is because we know there's gonna be severe weather, we know there's a chance of a tornado over a certain area, but we still can't tell you, unfortunately, exactly where that tornado is gonna pop up, and they can pop up very quickly like that. You got about five seconds, boy! So this storm was a nor'easter, and this is really a good look at what nor'easters do in the ocean. There are several different factors that can cause waves to be small or big. So first of all, you have to think about how strong the winds are, right? The wind speed, how strong they are. Then the fetch. So what is the distance that the wind travels over the water? Is it short or is it long? That's the fetch. And then the bathymetry, which is an interesting word. And essentially when you go to the beach, you walk on the sand and then you know how you go out in the water and it keeps going down, 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 down. That's the bathymetry. So the waves, will vary on how steep the bathymetry is, how deep it is, or how shallow it is, how far it goes out. I've searched and searched and searched and searched and searched, and I can't really find any legitimate accounts of animals, you know, dropping from the sky like this. I mean, there are times, you know, after a hurricane, after the water has risen and then it goes back, you do unfortunately see a lot of dead fish, perhaps, you know, because the water has receded. But to see, you know, fish and frogs and plague-like things, you know, falling from the sky, I just can't find any accounts of it. So there is some truth to this dust storm sandstorm that we're seeing in this movie. There's something called a haboob, and it's a real thing. And you see it a lot of time in the desert southwest or deserts really around the world. When you have these thunderstorms and they actually can pump out the winds, you know, ahead of it. And what it does is it kicks up all this dry dust and it causes this huge wall of, you know, 
dust and sand, whatever it can kick up. And they can be as high as 5,000 feet in the air, some of the biggest ones. So that really does happen and it, it can make it really dark like it did there and make it really orange. So that part does happen, but I'll tell you what, you're gonna need more than just some goggles or some, you know, what was that, like iron mask around his mouth because it does make it really hard to breathe, it's hard to see. Obviously it's not good to breathe in that stuff. To all you Hollywood producers that might be watching this, the reality is, is weather can be that, you know, eye catching and scary. The real stuff actually can be. So, you know, for us as a meteorologist, I just hope that people don't take lessons on how to prepare and what to do from a lot of these movies. I feel like we need to have like something at the bottom of the screen, like this is just a movie. This is not, this does not really happen. This is not really what you should do. But, you know, maybe we could do a movie with real life weather because it is that intense and show people actually what to do.